Well, I sure have a problem with schedules. You guys remember in 2016 where I only uploaded 13 videos that year? Here's the thing. While I don't want that to happen again, I'm always scared it will. Even after a two month hiatus, done exclusively to make more content for a weekly schedule. So I figured you guys should have other YouTubers to watch. On June 28th, 2017, on a channel I don't use for horror anymore, I released a video known as 10 Horror YouTubers You Should Check Out. This was because I was concerned about scheduling, and I didn't want to leave people with no videos for god knows how long. Now things seem to be getting a little better, but I realized something. There were a few YouTubers I had to leave out for one reason or another, and also there was a lot of talent I've discovered after that video. So here, just for fun, are 10 more horror YouTubers you should check out, in no particular order. Cursed chain letters, creepypastas, true tales from Reddit, you get the idea. In 2017, however, we began seeing a small wave of New Age horror stories emerge via sites like Twitter, the most popular and notable of which obviously being the story of illustrator Adam Ellis and a ghost child he calls David. Fun fact, Rainbot Horror was originally supposed to be in the first list. However, when I was scripting that said video, she announced that she was leaving YouTube. I wanted to respect her decision, so I removed her from the list. When the video was completely processed, however, she came back. So I uploaded what I had and promised that if I ever made a sequel, Rainbot would be the first to be included. And here we are. Rainbot Horror is more or less known for her analysis videos, from Dear David to the Teletubbies Facts Twitter to the Blue Whale Suicide Game. Recently, she has also been doing videos based on the Mandela Effect, with, at the time of scripting this video, her most recent analysis being on the Beatles breakup. Rainbot, in 2017, was able to get videos from over 70 lesser known horror YouTubers and help them all out by putting them in a compilation known as 71 Creepy YouTube Channels. Fun fact, we were actually a part of that video, but on a personal note, I'm not very proud of my submission. Also, this was at a point in time where I still tried to use my now goof off channel as a mixed bag of content. I was given a second chance to make a better video for a similar compilation. Speaking of. There's even a point to where you can invite one of them over to help with various activities such as baking, crafting, and painting. How much better could it get? Nightmare Expo is a YouTuber I can't thank enough. When I heard he was doing a top 20 YouTube channels video, I was excited and started to work on my submission immediately. It was also a great opportunity to spread the word of my new horror channel, Hotel Room 103. Ever since then, my channel has been gaining the traction it needs, so of course I'm going to put him on the list as a huge thank you. Nightmare Expo is sort of a mixed bag of horror content. He went from exploring the well-known horror web series Petscop to Doki Doki Literature Club, to Karina Grisbo TV, to the strange and unusual content of the internet from Reddit, Facebook, YouTube, and so much more. I've always felt this mixed bag approach is definitely something worth looking into if you're also an inspiring creator. It gives your audience more options when it comes to content and gives you more ammunition to fire into your own channel. I'm not really that much of a fan of baking shows on YouTube as I'm not really much of a baker. It's not that I dislike the content itself, it's just not my cup of tea. However, I will give credit when credit is due, and man, does this channel really deserve it. And that channel is the Homicidal Homemaker. There is obviously so much love, effort, and passion that goes into every video from this channel. It makes me wonder how they've never gotten the right attention. It's almost criminal how overshadowed this channel is. Most videos start with a sketch related to what's about to be made as we cut to Casey Hansen who gives us a step-by-step -step gruesome tutorial on how to make the treat of the night. Her channel is worth checking out especially if you're into making baked goods for parties or just an inspiring baker who wanted to add some unique flair to their confectionery works. Well, 
your movie sucks tagged you in his childhood trauma video. What? I watched it on my lunch break. Hi there, I'm famous now. Big internet celebrity, I'm so famous. Oh God, no, please, no. Surprisingly, I couldn't find that many YouTubers who are known for reviewing horror movies. It seemed like one of the first ideas that would come to anyone's mind considering how big horror movies can be. I was stumped until I found Nick's Fears, a YouTuber that talks about good, bad, new, and old horror movies. One thing to admire about Nick's is that he's not afraid to be honest about the films that he talks about. If it's bad, he'll tell you and explain his reasons. If it's good, he'll not only explain, but also recommend the hell out of it. In a lot of his videos, Nix is tagged alongside his skeleton friend and co-host, Remington. But it's not just horror movies Nix will talk about. I'll let you discover the other portions of Nix's fears. Now that we've discussed Lovecraft's approach to myth-making, how he adapts and appropriates his own creations the way cultures do with their mythological iconography, we should probably talk about some of his actual mythos. That's a surprisingly tall order though, because Lovecraft's mythos kind of got away from him after his death. Some of his protégés, August Derleth and Donald Warren. From the strange and deranged mind of H.P. Lovecraft to stories told by the pocket monsters, Pokemon, storytelling in general is Tail Foundry's specialty. Tail Foundry stars this old robot who indulges us humans on the different aspects of storytelling from all across the globe. The first thing you may notice is a near professional level of editing and graphics, from the black silhouette of the robot himself to the grinding gears on the corners of the screen. All that definitely adds a lot more personality that immediately makes the channel stick out from the rest. Come in for the personality, stay for the stories that await you. How could I forget about Miyuji? I've been using his music in my video since the Gothic Slenderman days in 2014, and why wouldn't I? For those who don't know who Miyuji is, let me ask you. While watching a creepypasta rating from someone along the lines of, let's say, Mr. Creepypasta, Creeps McPasta, or Creepypasta Jr., and wonder, hmm, where can I listen to that ominous original music used in their narrations? Well, 90% of the time, you'll be able to find it on Miyuji's channel. Miyuji is a pianist known for creepy pieces and emotional rides. Trying to describe why certain music is worth listening to is a bit difficult, so how about I show you instead? Isn't that nice? If you're wondering, yes, Miyuji does allow others to use his works within your videos only if you give him credit. That sounds fair, doesn't it? And most importantly of all, why does everyone want to fuck the clown from the 2017 adaptation of it? All I know is that nothing has ever been the same since I came in possession of this frightening volume of demon resurrection passages. The Wattpad Ex Mortis, roughly translated, Book of the Edge. Hey, you guys like terrible creepypasta fan fictions? Jeff the Killer? And a 3D anime series that somehow thought it was appropriate for children? Well, I have the perfect YouTuber for you. This is Baptism on Fire a channel mainly looking into the strange and unusual side of the horror genre. 
You may know him from his series, Ask Jeff to Killer, or his videos looking into fan-made content based around the already mentioned killer and other horror icons. I'd recommend this channel if you want more laughs and scares. Trust me, it's worth it. Welcome back to Nightmine, friends, and welcome, for the first time, to our new residence. I'd like to thank you all immensely for bearing with me over the past, say, month and a half while the work was put in to make this place a reality. A personal favorite of mine, and one I definitely would have put in the original video if I had known about his channel then. Welcome to Nightmine, friends, where you can watch analysis videos from several different series like Dark Arcade, based around the cybernetic world of video games, and Night Vision, where Nightmine shows you dark tales, horror stories, and mysteries from all around the ominous corners of the web. While watching his videos, I definitely get a sense of professionalism, from making an animated version of himself for a candy bowl video, his Halloween segment, or even full-on puppets for his observation of the ever-popular web series, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Usually, I dislike videos that range from 30 minutes to an hour, but with Nightmind, I barely even notice time has even gone by. If I, someone who dislikes long content, is recommending someone who does just that, then you know Nightmind is at least worth checking out. Since the dawn of television, advertisers the world over have long been trying to find new and creative ways to access larger audiences through the tube. Whether through those annoyingly aggressive sales pitches, please my wife is pregnant, to apparent sponsorships by desperate celebrities, the medium just keeps growing. In today's episode of Darkology, we'll be analyzing the psychology behind some of TV's creepiest ads. Pop culture horror? Sure, why not? Despite the limitations some big companies may have with this kind of stuff, sometimes you will find something just a bit unnerving. Well, you might love Blue Lava 6 and his web series, Darkology, where he takes a look into the world of horror pop culture. He's talked about all sorts of things, such as horrifying Pokemon with his series, Horror Decks, and strange monsters and cryptids on the Grim Gallery. Much like the homicidal homemaker and tail foundry, you can definitely tell there's a lot of effort put into the presentation of each video. We have seen many unfortunate events unfold throughout the year of 2017. From terrorist attacks to relentless murders and even hurricanes, it seems that death, chaos, and misery have littered the calendar. And indeed, these occurrences have left many alone, confounded, and permanently heartbroken. Today, we recount some of the worst events of 2017. To me, it can be very difficult to mix both comedy and horror. Both are similar in that they're used to express emotion, but polar opposites when it comes to what kind of emotion you may express while enjoying said content. That's why you mainly see comedies mixed with sci-fi or western films. Things like sci-fi or western aren't meant to convey certain emotions, but instead a time and a place. As comedy is meant to make you laugh, horror is meant to make you scream, so mixing the two can be nearly impossible at times. Thankfully, a certain YouTuber was able to do just that. A content creator which I was basically crucified for not including in the original video, Rob Dyke, who is more known for his countdowns, is quite possibly the biggest horror content creator on this entire list, with almost 3 million subscribers to his arsenal. From his series, Seriously Strange, to other forms of content, Rob Dyke touches all dark corners. He's also very passionate for the horror community on this site, as seen on his Twitter. Rob Dyke is an inspiration for many, so it makes me wonder. How did I even forget to add him to the first list? Thank you all for watching the first episode of my new series, Slender Notes. Much like my other series, Cartoon Asylum, where I take a look at the darker side of the animation industry, here we take a look at the darker side of the internet. From ARGs, creepypastas, weird YouTube channels, and others, feel free to subscribe and watch out for the next Slender Notes, the top 15 horror web series. And why not give me some suggestions down below if you'd like. And also, thank you for spending the night at Hotel Room 103.